Welcome to Haxby Shed and the Welding Rotator Part 4. I've been looking on the internet for something that I can use as a connector here to connect the cable. I've been looking for uh, various shapes of battery terminal connectors and so on. Can't get anywhere with that so I'm going to make a connector or a connection plate out of this piece of brass. I've clamped the work to this face plate and that allow me to cut the arc that I need in this connector plate here. Bit dangerous as you can imagine but I've put a piece of wood behind the cross slide here to make sure I can't go too far this way. That's going fine. I'll just work away at it slowly till I've cut this curve out. I'm just taking it steady. 480 RPM, half millimetre cuts. I'm not in a rush. I'm going to do that last bit by hand. I don't want any disasters at this stage. I'll just clean these ends up. There's always a job for a shaper. There we are. Now this curved surface here isn't intended to rub against the side here at all. I'll actually bring it off a little bit like that. That's where the cable will go through from underneath from the back side. What I'm planning to do is to solder this to this copper sheet and the idea is being soldered and being curved like that it'll give the sheet some strength in that area. That's the plan anyway. And once I've got it soldered on I'll cut all the excess copper off then. I'll drill and tap for a grub screw to go in there to clamp the cable. Start this tap off in here. Brass is funny stuff, isn't it? Ha. Ah. It's an 8mm hole and about 6mm diameter cable. So I'm going to sleeve the end of this cable. Probably solder on a ring and then clamp it. Anyway, I'm going to leave that little bit till later. We'll see if we can solder this. <laughs> wiggly thing onto the copper plate. I'll just shine up this face with a file so it solders properly. I don't want this to float away on the solder and end up over here somewhere so I'm going to drill a hole through this to correspond to this 8 millimeters, and I'll drop something through the hole to keep it in place. I'm going to use this fine electronic solder because there's much less chance of pushing the part then and moving it. But I have put flux underneath this. Well, the solder's flowed under and I've managed to keep it off this plate here, so maybe that'll be okay. Well, it's on there in the right place, so the next job is to trim the excess copper off. Another afternoon in the workshop and it's a bit chilly here. Anyway, we interrupt this broadcast to give you a bit of random news, which I'm pleased about. Now this morning I just got a really good deal on fibre broadband. So since forever I've been on uh, fibre to the cabinet, so it's copper from the cabinet to the house. And uh, I was getting about 23 megabits per second. Um, so I rang up Virgin Media. Virgin Media cabled out this area about two years ago and uh, I thought mm, maybe it's time to move to full fibre broadband and I rang up inquiring about 100 megabits per second but I also wanted um, a SIM only deal for my mobile. Anyway, so the lady in sales said if you go for the SIM only deal for the mobile for £4.99 a month 
will double all your rates, data rates. And so for £29 a month, I'm getting 200 megabits per second down, 20 megabits per second up, and an allowance of 10 gigabytes on my SIM only deal. <laughs> it was a deal that just kept giving. It was like, shall I go for this? Oh, well, we can do this, we can do this. It's like, right, when can you start? So it's not coming into service until the third week of January, which is my current provider's contract ends then. But anyway, I'd be interested to know what you get where you are. Just a little bit of a side subject. Let's get on with this. So I need to find a way of fixing this so it can't spin. And the idea at the moment is to put some screws through here and here because the screws can run through into this cavity behind that one there. I don't think there's going to be a massive turning force on this. So although the screws are near the center rather than the outside where they would have more effect, I think it's going to be fine. The screw heads will need to sit in this recess here. It's 2.7 millimeters deep and I've got some screws here which have got a head of about 2.5 millimeters. So they would sit in there without interfering with this. I found some little flat nuts and they just sit within this first insulating ring here. Holes drilled there and there. So now I need to spot through this plate, shorten these screws, and that's done, I think. That's all now locked together, but I'll assemble it fully later on. Put the back plate on and it should clear these two screws here, which it does. Time to fix the chuck on. I got some new screws for this, cap heads, 75mm long, 8 by one25 millimeters. I've lined up the chuck and the back plate with the two dots. I'm happy that this jaw is going to be opposite this hole here. so that hole will come through about where my finger is. So we'll put these three old screws in the back to clamp the two together before I centre pop it and then I'm going to try to drill one, two, three on my indexer. Assuming these are exactly 120 degrees apart, which I'm sure they will be. And then I'll tap it with the tapping head. When I made this indexing base with the L00 fitting on it, I never envisaged having a chuck within a chuck. But it's proving to be a very useful tool, this base. Anyway, I'm just going to locate this hole with this 8.5mm drill and spot through into this back plate. Now with the 6.8. <laughs> One out. That's it. That's it. Now I'll set it up for tapping. We'll start by putting on this reaction bar, which I made in an earlier video. Lock it on with an Allen grub screw. And then the tapping head itself. I'm going to have to adjust this to get it to fit in, of course. When you get a pillar drill like this, a drill press, as some people say, and it's got so, you know, you can lower the table so much, you can't imagine when you would actually use it. But 
here we are again, using stuff. It's great to have the capability. I got some really cheap spiral flute taps. So I'm hoping they're going to be okay and not going to break off in the hole. What have we got there? M8. Right, here goes. You'll see this rotating backwards to start with. Once it starts to cut, this will reverse and turn the correct way. And then when we get down to the bottom, I just lift and it will reverse out. That's the plan. Put a bit of oil on. See if these cheap taps are any good. The answer is yes they are. So we'll spin it round to the next one and actually I will show you that because I think it's exciting using the tapping head. And there we are. That's going, that's going, and that's going. We're in luck. Actually, these are spot on. There's no resistance at all. It's perfect. I must get a new lamp. The batteries are kaput in this one. Oh, look at that. So I just need to take a fraction off the length of those screws. Come on, you lamp. That's fully charged. It's just the batteries are gone. Yep, that'll do. I've just ground about a millimetre off the end of these to finish those off. So now I want to look at securing this. It's held on with a grub screw on the key, but really that's not enough. This chuck's a bit heavy, I don't want it on my toes. But there is a centre screw thread in there. So I can put this in with a washer on the end. Put a bit of Loctite on it. Obviously it's covering that hole up a little bit. The gas port, let's call it. So I'll just file it to suit this. This is kind of how that'll go. I can probably get some highly flexible tube rather than this PVC pipe. But even so, it's decision time about the length of this. It doesn't need to stick out anything like that much. The considerations are really... Hang on. Oh, there we are. The considerations are... I want the jaws to be able to close. So we've arranged it so the pipe comes out the side here. But I don't know. It might be I want something in the vise as small as that. But for some reason, and I can't tell you why, I might need the tube to come up through the centre. Well, I don't want the tube having a massive kinking it like that to get up the centre. So taking more off this might be a good idea.